Hey guys, welcome back to the Mac Grimm Music Channel. Uh, today I wanted to do an overview of this SP555 made by Roland. Uh, if you watch my channel, you know that I'm into these SP samplers, and I thought it might be fun to kind of overview some of the functions and features about this one that make it different from other SPs in the range. So welcome, stick around, let's get into it. Okay, so the Roland SP555 is a, another in the Roland SP family of samplers, which include Boss's popular SP303 and Roland's SP404 installments. Uh, this sampler was released in 2008, so it puts it after the original SP404, but before the SP404SX. Uh, and there are some functional differences between those three. Um, so what we'll do first here is just kind of talk about the obvious differences in the form factor. So I've got an SB404SX. It's mostly laid out the same, uh, but there are some changes. For one, I don't know if you can tell this on the video, but the pads are a little bit bigger on the SB404. Um, they're a little bit wider, maybe more rectangular. These are a tad smaller. Even though there's 16 of them, they're, uh, they're smaller physically pads than the SP404. Uh, further on the pads, like I said, you've got 16 pads, which is cool. Uh, you've got this fixed velocity button. So let me go in here. It does have velocity on the pads, so I can... Uh, if you hit fixed velocity, makes them all at 100%. Um, it's got this roll function, which will snap to whatever the tempo you've got programmed is. So. Uh, you can alter that uh, to be uh, an 8 count, 4 count, 16 count, 32, it can, it can roll really fast. Uh, but that's kind of a neat thing, especially if you want to lay down a hi-hat or something and you want it to be just like perfectly snapped uh, to quantization without using the sequencer. It can do that. Also it's good just for doing like trap hat rolls and things like that, or whatever you want it to do. It's, I mean, you know, creativity is the only limit there. Uh, it has the pattern sequencer, which is up here. It's usually kind of like over here on the, uh, on the 404. Um, same buttons though for it. All these sampling controls are pretty much the same. Cancel and remain being in the same spot, delete, mark. All of that will feel familiar if you know the 404. Uh, on this side of the device is where it starts to get real different. Uh, for one, you have this like XLR style uh, mic input with multiple controls, including using phantom power, which is great. So you can use condenser mics with this one. Uh, it's got an external mic as well. It's still the same crappy quality as the other ones, but it's there if you want it. Um, then you've got a dedicated volume control for mic as well as one for line in. Uh, here's your master volume control. Uh, you can turn these on and off with these switches. The effects have been broken out completely into their own section, whereas the other devices, they kind of surround this dial at the top. On this one, it's over here on the left. Uh, you've got five de uh, dedicated, um, I don't know what you call these, master effects or something, that are filter, voice transform, delay, isolator, DJFX looper, pretty much the same as on the other SP404s. Uh, then you have the MFX button, which will allow you to get into 32 different effects. And one thing that's really cool about this device is They've broken them into two banks. And if you watch the screen there, you can see I'm going between A and B. And what I can do is use this as a shortcut. So if I know that I want to go to A5 because that's reverb, I get this into the A range, hit five, boom, I'm already on reverb. I don't know if you can hear that a little bit there, but reverb's on. Um, same if I want to go into B, I can just immediately hit B11 and it will take me to B11, which is an amp simulator on this one. Um, so yeah, pretty cool the way you can get into effects and, and apply those really quickly. Uh, another thing I like about the effects on here is there's a lot of subtypes to them. So again, let's get to um, get a sound here. I'm going to go to reverb again, A5. Whoops. Get into A's, A5. And I have the normal controls like time and balance. But there's now a type where I've got rooms, room one, room two, studio one, studio two, hall one, hall two. Turn it up 
a little bit so I can hear it good. Turn the time. Yeah, so there's a bunch of different kinds of reverbs in the reverb. And the same is for a, a lot of these, like lo-fi compressor has like six different kinds of compressors inside of that one effect. So it's 32 on the surface level, but a lot of the effects have varying effects within their category. So there's quite a few effects on here. Um, the other big unique feature on this device is the loop capture. And you can use this to capture loops that you're sampling from external, which is handy, although not that different than how you would just sample a loop normally. Um, where it really shines is if you want to create something that is snapped to a particular tempo. Um, normally you'd have to kind of resample on a 404 and, and kind of hope that you're playing it to the tempo or you just groove with whatever's in your heart basically. If, you, if you're the type that you want a metronome, it's built into this. So, so again, let's turn on the metronome. I'll turn that effect off. I'm going to hit record. It's waiting for me. just looping. And if you had drums and other things on here, you could start to play those on top. Pretty cool stuff. Um, so I'm going to tell it save to a pad. Hit save to pad. I'm going to choose the pad I want it to go. And hit save pad. So now bounce that loop into that pad. So that basically frees this up now. I can go through and hit delete. And now this is open for me to create another loop from another set of sounds, drums, whatever I want it to be. And again, I can turn this metronome and I can record straight to this loop function and then turn it into its own sample. And this is nice because now I can segment, you know, bass, chords, leads, drums. They can all be kind of resampled down onto their own pad so when you're arranging your song if you want the beat to drop out and just the bass and the chords to carry or vice versa uh, you can do that and kind of arrange your music with a little more detail on the fly. Uh, obviously you can do this with the pattern sequencer but if you're the type that you kind of like just want to feel it with the pads, a lot of people do, um, this loop capture makes that a lot easier. Now obviously you can loop capture from external things so let me show you that real quick. I'm going to grab this little pocket operator um, that should be okay with the volume. Let's see where we're at. I'm going to turn that up a little bit. Now, I'm just going to capture this loop while it's playing. This isn't even playing anymore, it's just that. You get the idea. It's kind of whack and a rush job, but <clears throat> that's how it works. Um, so you can see how composing and constructing beats uh, on time, on tempo, can be pretty easy with this function down here. It's probably so far my favorite thing about the SP555 and it's something that doesn't really exist. I mean not as easy as this on the SP303, the 404, or the 606 which I have videos on all of those on this channel if you want to see more about those. Um, Alright, let's see what else is different. Um, it's got the ever <laughs> cheesy but ever kind of fun D-beam, um, which Roland literally put on everything it seemed like for a while there, and now they're gone, but uh, you've got the synth. Kind of like an air theremin or something. It's cheesy, but whatever. Uh, you got the filter. And actually the filter is pretty nice. Um, the SP-606 has a D-beam with a filter as well, but I have to say this one has this kind of more warm, round kind of vibe to it. Oh, it does 
does not lose work on the loop. That's something I'm just now finding out. Okay, so it's got to be on a pad. Okay, um, so yeah, pretty pretty cool stuff on this device. Uh, so yeah, sound-wise, I think this device is pretty similar to the SP404SX. Um, it's not as warm, as gritty as, say, like the SP303. Uh, I don't know what the original OG SP404 really its character is. Uh, I mean, I've heard it in videos, but I've never used one, so I can't really say for sure. Um, but yeah, I think it sounds about like the SP404SX, um, but obviously it has some unique features, it's got some unique effects, it's got more effects types, uh, it's got this loop capture. Um, so it offers a lot of things that the SP404SX does not. Uh, unfortunately, it, things that it does not have that that device does is a function button. So I can't copy samples, I can't exchange samples, and, and those are things that are missed here. Um, also, it's a little bit slower. Uh, it uses these types of uh, smart media cards similar to an MPC 500 or 2500 or 5000 uh, or the or the OG SP404 um, instead of, of this. So because of that some functions are a little bit slower. Um, now it's not as slow as the SP303 or god no it's not as slow as the SP202. That one you can like try to delete a sample and then go have lunch and come back. Um, but that is one thing to be aware of. These are harder to come by now. Um, I think two gigs is the maximum that this thing can work with. So fair amount of sample time, really. Uh, so yeah, that's about it. Just general overview to start here. If you have questions specifically, I'll try to answer them in the comments. Um, subscribe to the video so you can see more content on this as well as other samples and samplers and, and music gear. And yeah, as always, thank you for watching. I'll just play us out with a little bit of music like I normally do. And we will see you guys next time. Bye.